Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. We are here, ready to talk some K-State basketball. Yeah, I know. Uh, probably don't want to do it, but uh, we have to, kind of. I don't know. It's 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 a whole ordeal with K-State basketball to, to talk about it because sometimes they're here, sometimes they're here. There really is no in-between with this team. And it seemed like we were maybe going to get close to that in-between on Saturday where, hey, okay, you didn't play great, but you found a way to win. Not the case. They didn't play great, and they found a way to lose at the end of the game, which has been a common theme, even though they've tried to play themselves back into things. Massive opportunity, though, for them, although unlikely, but it is a massive opportunity going on the road to face KU on Tuesday in Allen Fieldhouse because K-State needs wins and they need good ones. And KU provides an opportunity for them to do that. So 8 o'clock Tuesday night, K-State, KU, Allen Fieldhouse, ESPN is where uh, you can watch the game if uh, you know, you're know you not going to Allen, which I would advise you not to. Uh, God bless you if you do. You're, you're a true cat, uh, but you don't have to subject yourself to it. Um, I was a paying customer there one time. I don't think I will ever see myself buying a ticket to go to a game there ever again. But the 17 and 12 Cats, they meet the 21 and 8 Jayhawks, who have lost two straight to BYU at home and then at Baylor this weekend. So, Drew, uh, what is your expectation for tomorrow night and what does K State need to get out of this game? I mean, I, I don't want to be the, the, the Debbie Downer here, but the, the expectation is to play hard and see if you have a chance to win at the end. I mean, it, it's just something that hasn't happened besides one time in our lifetime so like the, the expectation when case it goes to lawrence for the most part is okay probably gonna lose but like you at least gotta play well and i think that's kind of where we're at with this team because their their backs are against the wall and this is it, it is literally now now or never because we had Saturday doesn't really matter if you somehow find a way to win in Lawrence. So th this is truly like now or never instead of, okay, it would be nice to have this. So you don't have to like go all out and win the last two, but it, it's, it, it's going to be an experience. I've personally never been to Allen Fieldhouse before going for my first time uh, for this game. So interested to see what the hype is all about. But I I genuinely don't know what to really expect from K-State because I, I can go, or we can go like five minutes during a game and not know which K-State team is going to show up. Yeah, I mean, and you're going to have multiple times throughout the game where you think, okay, hey, maybe they're figuring this thing out, and then it dips down, and that's kind of what got them on Saturday where they came out and they made a, a good push early in the second half. But then they let Cincinnati push it back up to a double-digit lead, and so then they had to make a furious comeback again. They finally get the lead, and then you know the defense uh, lets Lukosius get a look. He knocks it down, and because nobody else was even a threat offensively on Saturday night, I know what the box score says about Jarrell Colbert, but he, that was just a product of circumstance. Tyler Perry was the only guy that should have been trusted to do something on Saturday night. It's unfair to do it for a guy of his stature because there's really only one thing he can do, well, two, and one of them is unlikely. The other is tough to do when they know what's going to happen. Number one, it's get a three off, which he had been great at all game. But in that moment, Cincinnati was going to take their, their chances with anybody else making that shot, but not Tyler Perry. He was six of eight from three in the game. And then Tyler Perry could drive to the basket where he's been a good finisher but late in the game, it gets a little bit tougher. They're, again, dedicating a lot more to him, and they're not going to call a foul in that situation. They're just not. And I think that's where he went up, and he should have tried to just finish the shot, even if he got blocked. It gives you a better chance of getting that call, but he he didn't. I think he got the contact and was like, I got to get this to somebody else because they're not going to call it. He's been there before. I don't hate what happened at the end of the game, but it just comes back to, again, Tyler Perry had no help on Saturday. Nobody stepped up to help him you are going to need a lot of guys to step up and help you against KU. That's what happened at home for K-State. They had guys step up and play well in that game. And now you're going on the road, the toughest environment in the Big 12 for you to face. Like, Allen Fieldhouse itself is not special. It is a dump. 
but the people inside of it are what make it special. That is the toughest place to play. That is a crowd that eats away teams alive. And this K-State team, I mean, they already struggle in half-empty gyms in Stillwater, Oklahoma to get some mojo going. Now you're going to have 16,000 people just screaming and yelling at you that they hate you. Good luck on Tuesday night. So Tyler Perry needs some help. And based on what we've seen from Cam Carter recently, I don't think he's going to give it to you. And Arthur Kaluma, that was, he had his worst game as a K-Stater on, on Saturday. And you just can't have that from two of your top three guys. No, he, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Tyler Perry is going to need a lot of help. But the formula to beat KU is, is the exact same that they did uh, in Manhattan. They don't take a lot of threes. They don't make a lot of threes because they don't take a lot. So if you can get hot from three, you have a chance. I mean, and we've seen teams be able to shoot well against KU all season long. And that's that's why, even though they've only lost one game at home, that's why they've been at least more vulnerable is because this is this is not a good shooting KU team. And, and if you let the right guys shoot, it becomes a lot easier for you too. Because like I said on the Sunday show, if K-State loses because Nick Timberlake, El Marco Jackson, and Dewan Harris are scoring a lot, I'm okay with that. And I would chalk that up to, okay, like it just wasn't meant to be your night. But, it, I mean, it's going to be a tough one. I, I don't believe Bill Self has lost uh, on senior night before. Uh, KU hasn't lost back-to-back -back home games since 1989. It, it's going to be probably the biggest challenge that K-State has had all season. And it always is, because when you go to Lawrence, even though they consider it not a rivalry, it is. They, their their crowd gets even more amped than they usually do, especially with Missouri not being in the Big 12 anymore. Uh, the the interesting thing to me, I think, will be what what does Kevin McCullough look like because he hasn't played back to back games since February 5th. So and he played a lot against Baylor. So I'm really interested to and see and played it. well. Like I, yes. for a guy that was out and you know, national media was reporting that Kevin McCullough might be dead. Uh, and then all of a sudden he, he just plays like the entire game and plays really well against Baylor. Uh, it was kind of funny to, to see how that ended up working out. Uh, look, I, I, you look at what KU and you brought up the shooting They're in conference play this year, they're 31%. That's 11th in the big 12. And then if you look at most of the games where they got their scares at home and the one loss they got, they were three of 15 from three. Last week against BYU, they were also terrible at the free throw line, 19 of 31. BYU was able to shoot 38% from three, so that was significant. Uh, KU was bad in that game against Baylor where they had the lead, but Baylor came back and had an opportunity. Honestly, if Baylor doesn't shoot uncharacteristically for themselves, Baylor probably wins that game or at least gets it to overtime in Lawrence because Baylor only shot 31% from three compared to KU's 24 uh, and then, you know, some of the other situations that have played out for, you know, for, for KU this year, like the TCU game, um, KU didn't take a lot of threes in that game. But uh, if I remember correctly, Trey Tennyson got hot in that game from three. So they at least had one guy that kind of went and had that Tyler Perry stretch, which like what we saw against Cincinnati, where he was knocking him down when he got him. And that kind of ties back into what you ask of Cam Carter is, cut out the turnovers like he and Arthur Kluma have to cut that out but what would really elevate this K-State offense with the way that Tyler Perry is playing right now when you get your looks from three knock them down make the shots when you have them and that provides some momentum Cam Carter back-to-back -back games has had some moments like that so there his shooting is is getting better into a point where it could be helpful he was just so bad at controlling the basketball on Saturday against Cincinnati that he was a net negative, and Arthur Kaluma didn't hang on to the ball, was not making shots at any point. He was 3 of 6 at the free throw line. That also cost K-State. So Tyler Perry's doing what he can right now. You have ancillary pieces stepping up. Jarrell Colbert with 15 and 7 for a team that's trying to fight for the, the bubble. Like I didn't expect Jarrell Colbert to give a real boost in a Big 12 game this year. So other guys are stepping up. Day Day Ames has improved his shooting and is putting himself in a position to be on the floor more. Now your best players have to step up and pull their weight. Tyler Perry's doing it. Arthur Kaluma and Cam Carter are not. They need that to happen in any game. 
but especially in this game against KU because it's a monumental task going into Allen and winning. And also the fact that, I mean, KU lost their last game in that building. Uh, the, the numbers would suggest that this is almost an impossibility, not just K-State's historic numbers, not having won there since 2006, but the fact that KU's not losing back-to-back home games. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take the best effort K-State has played all season long to win an outfield house, and I, I feel very confident saying that. Like and K-State's it, defense is playing, hasn't played as well no. as it did in that game against KU. And that I know they had some shaky games just before that, but K-State's defense was still playing at a pretty high level when the teams met for the first time. It's a wildly different set of circumstances this time against KU. But, you know, K-State held Dickinson below his field goal percentage. They made Kevin McCuller go 6 of 18. That was the difference in Manhattan, K-State's defense. Yeah, if they don't defend well, it's hard to see a path where K-State wins because we're just at the point where if you can get anything, honestly, from Cam Carter, you're you're feeling good about yourself. And Arthur Kluma has been pretty up and down lately. And and you just worry about if the game doesn't start well and K-State doesn't start fast, which K-State hasn't started fast on the road probably since... That since the LSU game, I think that they yeah haven't... no it's it, the, the stars on the road. We were talking about it over the weekend. It doesn't seem like they've been interested in doing that lately. So it <laughs> seems unlikely and tough to do. Uh, and and KU again, we'll see with the McCuller thing. That's probably the biggest wild card in all this. Obviously, if KU doesn't have McCuller, you feel a little bit better because, like you talked about, then it just comes down to don't give anything easy to Dickinson. Try to abuse him on defense and force the other guys to win that game for KU, which, look, the talent is there for them to do that. Just, and I think KU fans understand this too, they have some guys that aren't always capable of doing it. For Dewan Harris, it's because he's passive at times. And I, I I can't believe that there are KU fans out there that don't scream at their TV when <laughs> Dewan Harris passes up open shots. Like, if, if Dewan Harris is shooting, which he started to in the game in Manhattan, he took some shots there, that can help them, but you're going to have to, you know, those other guys that have to be on the floor because, you know, depth is pretty thin uh, for trustable options. You're, you're going to have to force it in their hands. But Ken Palm says 74 to 65 KU. Uh, let, let's find out if Drew is optimistic, stupid, or uh, on the right side of history with his prediction. Uh, I mean, honestly, that sounds about right. I, I don't think that the game, like people have talked about, even if KSA would beat Cincinnati, that there were KSA fans saying that they might lose by like 20 or 30 in this in this game. I, to be honest, I, I just don't see that because KU doesn't really have the the juice, I think, to really blow somebody out of the building outside of Oklahoma State, which they've done twice. So I, I'll say KU wins like 76 to 67 somewhere in that range like it's nine points feels about right uh you know maybe i'm maybe i'm wildly off on this but i feel like there's been just a lot of points scored uh over the last however long between these two teams when they when they get out there especially that game in in lawrence uh you know last year it was 90 to 78 uh the you know the last year of bruce was 102 to 83 um 74 to 51 before that like they're they do get high scoring in some of these games um i think i i think ku wins this game obviously there's a chance that k-state can keep it close and be competitive um and, and i also wonder sometimes like does it help that you have so many guys on this roster that like they haven't played in this game before and they haven't been around long enough to kind of get the you know the heebie-jeebies into him with going to this place like is this just another game for a guy like Arthur Kaluma and and Tyler Perry uh we'll see I I think KU probably wins this game though uh, I'm, I'll give him 79 to 63 um we'll we'll I don't know we'll see if it gets even that high scoring I feel like there's a chance though even with what I've said about the history and everything else that this game could end up on the lower scoring end but you really don't know these are two teams that are are big time wild cards and there's actually a lot of similarities between the two teams the only difference is is that the talent pool that KU is working with is up here and the one that K-State's working with is down here for this season it's 
but you look and you say, okay, you have a couple guys at the top that have to carry you. And if they're not on the floor or they're struggling, you're going to lose because you're not getting anything from anywhere else. And you shouldn't even think about relying on anything from anywhere else. Like if you get it, holy cow, thank whoever you want to thank and, and feel blessed about it. But it seems unlikely you get anything from, you know, the ancillary pieces. So you need it from the top. And that's what K-State needs to have happen on yeah. uh, on Tuesday night. The, the other real difference between these two teams, especially in conference play, because, I mean, look at look at the conference records. They're they're pretty similar. But the, the difference is, is that KU has won uh, all of their home games besides one. And K-State had the has the two losses to Oklahoma and TCU like K-State wins both of those two games. The, their records are the exact same in conference. So, I mean, that, that's really the, the difference is that KU just never loses at home. Yeah, no, it's it's true. And you think about like where, where things could be. Uh, I mean, KU has their stinkers this season in games, obviously. The, the one at home against BYU, even though BYU is a solid team, I'd say is a stinker based on how they shot. And certainly the West Virginia and UCF games that they have on their resume are, are tough as well. So, I don't know, probably – Probably wise to just side on the 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 portion of history we know where KU kicked K State's butt in this building. Uh, but based on if you were just looking at this year alone and thinking about it, I don't think anybody knows what to expect from what these two teams do when they get on the floor Tuesday night. So we will see. Drew and I will be there. We'll have full coverage before, during, and after the game over at K State Online, and also head over to kstateonline.com at on three to get some news and notes from K-State Spring Football. Chris Kleiman had his press conference on Monday. So a lot of things to dive into. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday for more uh, about the Cats, basketball, football, anything we can find for good news for K-State. Uh, we'll, we'll do it for you on Wednesday because I'm sure everybody will need a little dose of positivity. So we're out of here. Thanks for